What is going on today, guys? It is me, Nishi Fix, and welcome to the monthly manga pickup video for the month of September and October. It feels like it's been so long since I've done one of these. I normally don't do these monthly anymore. I know I do it like kind of bi monthly now. I hope I said that right, but yeah, I guess that's how that will be the new format for the monthly manga pickups because I really don't pick up that much manga one month anymore as opposed to how I used to. Um, I've been picking up a lot more anime recently and this format just seems like a better way to do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the pickup video. I have a lot of great stuff to show you guys. So let's go ahead and hop on into it. The first volume I picked up is Dead Man Wonderland Volume 11 and Dead Man Wonderland stays with only two volumes left. Uh, this volume tells us a lot more about Shiro and Gata's relationship, so yeah, I'm really excited to see how the story will end. I know how Dead Man Wonderland ends. I read the last chapter, but I guess I did not read everything leading up to it, so I guess when I read it this time, I'll feel more attachment than how I did when I kind of like skimmed it originally, so yeah, very happy to own Dead Man Wonderland. The next volume I picked up is Nisekoi Volume 11, and on the cover we have a very nice Marika Tachibana. If you've been reading the Nisekoi manga online, you will know that Tachibana's arc has just ended, and holy crap, that arc was so very long. <laughs> but yeah, it has finally ended. Um, yeah, this volume tells us a lot more about Tachibana, introducing one of her friends from the country, cause, because that's where she's from, because, you know, I think she has, like, a Kansai accent, but, yeah, Nisekoi stays amazing. You know, Shikomi stays amazing with his art as well. Next we have Seven Deadly Sins, volume number 10. Um, yeah, very happy to own this. I still have to catch up with my Seven Deadly Sins. I've really been slagging recently. I know they just put the anime on Netflix, and the anime got an English dub, and then Bryce Pappenbrook's in it, so I'm gonna have to check that out soon. Because I never finished the Seven Deadly Sins anime. I watched like the first episode and like stopped. So yeah, I'm gonna have to check that out. Up next I picked up was One Punch Man Volume 2. Okay, I actually have One Punch Man Volume 1. But I'm letting my friend borrow it at the time. So it's in his room and he's like reading it. So yeah, One Punch Man stays absolutely amazing. I read this online about two years ago. Never really, you know, bothered to catch up with it, but I read like the first couple chapters. Then I saw it was on Amazon, and I was like, holy crap, five bucks for a volume. I'm totally going to hop on that. One Punch Man is absolutely amazing. The anime is amazing. Haven't watched it yet, but I've seen the promo, so going to watch that soon. But yeah, One Punch Man has some of the best art that I've ever seen in a manga, like, period. Like, this shit's on, like, berserk status, and that is absolutely saying a lot. One Punch Man fans, don't get angry at me. Up next we have Noragami, Volume 7, and Noragami. Can we just talk about Noragami covers? Like, the manga itself is very amazing. But the covers, the mate finish on these volumes, Kodansha, Kodansha, stop out doing yourselves. You guys are making Yen Press look bad right now. But yeah, Noragami's amazing. Very excited season 2 is starting. Up next... I picked up Assassination Classroom, volume number six in Assassination Classroom. Like I said, just absolutely stays one of my favorite shonen out there. I'm very excited for season two because the anime got greenlit. It is coming. Super happy. If you haven't read Assassination Classroom, you really need to check it out. It's very unique. It reminds me a lot of GTO, except there's like a gigantic alien <laughs> trying to destroy the Earth. <laughs> Up next, we have the final volume of Claymore. I'm going to talk about Claymore for a second. Volume 27 of Claymore. Claymore is amazing. It's an amazing series in general. If you only watch the anime, I highly suggest that you go out and read the manga for Claymore because I think it kind of splits off around like volume 12 to 13 ish from the anime and it just takes off from there. It has a couple of sluggish parts but a lot of the characters get amazing, amazing development. A lot of stuff you don't see in the anime. And the final volume itself, I'm not going to flip through it because I don't want to spoil it for you guys. Is that... I'm stuttering. It's absolutely awesome. I love Claymore. Finally happy to own this series complete. At last. The next volume I picked up was 
Your Lie in April, Volume 3. Okay, so Your Lie in April, Volume 3. I read through this volume, and I very much enjoy Your Lie in April, as you know, but when I've been reading the manga, I kind of realize I'm not kind of getting the same effect that I felt when I read, like, well, when I watched the anime. So, while the Your Lie in April manga is very good, and I highly suggest it to those who have not seen the anime if they want to read it, it's very well done. I say you watch the anime instead. I really won't be collecting any more of your lie in April at the for the time being. I may be I may come back to it, but for now I won't be coming back to the manga for some time. Just because, you know, I felt like I got all I needed out of the anime because the anime just did such an amazing job that I really feel like I don't need to read the manga for that, which is weird because it's one of the first times that's ever really happened to me. Usually when I watch an anime, I kind of want to check out the manga afterwards. Up next I picked up was your uh, A Silent Voice of Volume 3. Amazing series, as always. Um, I'm very happy to see, you know, Shoya becoming very closer to, uh, I want to say her name's like Nishi No No. I, I keep forgetting what her name is all the goddamn time. Shoko. Let's just go with her first name, Shoko. But yeah, it's very nice to see him getting closer with her, reconnecting with people from his past. Uh, this volume, he actually reconnects with the girl from his past that also used to bully Shoko and things do not go as planned. This is a very good manga. It's getting a movie soon, I think, by uh, Kyo Annie is animating it, so it should be very good. The next volume we picked up is Shoko Keki no Soma Food Porn. No, Food Wars, Volume 8. Stays amazing with its art, as always. Really nothing much to say about that. I really gotta watch the anime for Food Wars. I've been slacking because I'm like, you know what? I've been reading the manga for this. I really don't need to watch the anime. But then I see clips from the anime and I'm like, I need to watch the anime. Sorry, that was my PS4. But yeah, Soma. Up next, we picked up is Yamada-kun and the Seven Witches, Volume 4. I have not read this volume yet, but I really need to get around to it. Yamada-kun, very good. Gonna get on that. This next volume is one volume I've been wanting to talk about. Boom. You guys know I'm a fanboy for the Rail Deck series, so we have a certain scientific accelerator, which is a spin-off of a certain scientific railgun, which is a spin-off of a certain magical index. So a certain scientific accelerator. Very, very good first volume. It kind of starts off with Accelerator just chilling in his hospital room. He meets this girl that he later finds out is a mage. Well, he doesn't know she's a mage yet, but you can assume she's like a magician of sorts. And pretty much he gets into this whole plot of this group trying to get Last Order to complete their experiment to bring justice to Academy City. It's, it's kind of not like real justice. It's like diluted Akame got killed type justice. But yeah, certain scientific accelerator is very good. The art is very, very awesome. If you like the Rail Dex series, you will definitely, definitely like this book. Seeing more of Accelerator being as cool as he is. Seeing more Last Order. It's just really awesome. Next, we have one of my favorite anime that streamed last year. And I'm very happy to say that this manga was released by Vertical, and as you know, Vertical probably releases the best quality mangas out there. In my opinion, Vertical releases the best quality mangas. We have Tokyo ESP with my favorite protagonist on the front. Ooh, <laughs> I can't pronounce her last name for the life of me. Rinka. Let's just go with Rinka. I can never pronounce her last name. But yeah, Tokyo ESP is by Hajime Sagawa. It doesn't... He also wrote Guy Ray Zero. If you guys don't know what that is, it's another amazing manga and anime. Pretty much it stars her. She ends up getting superpowers, and a lot of people get superpowers from these fish that fly around and they end up becoming espers. And pretty much it's like, imagine the manga version of like the X-Men. That's how I feel when I read Tokyo ESP. It's just really, really good. It's about this radical group of like espers wanting to like bring justice to the world and killing tons of people. And then Rinka and her group of espers that she meets throughout the story go and try to stop them. And that's pretty much the story of Tokyo ESP. It's very, very good. Vertical did an amazing job with this release. They're doing two in one volumes. The manga itself is actually way, way better than the anime, which honestly surprised me. So yeah, Tokyo ESP. Check it out. A lot of people didn't like the anime though. I loved it. I'm sorry, I'm so terrible at like describing stuff. <laughs> Up next we have 
No Game, No Life, volume number three. I actually got this volume a uh, couple of weeks ago. I haven't gotten around, not a couple of weeks ago, like last week actually. I haven't gotten around to reading it yet. But uh, I guess from the summary, I want to say the anime kind of like stops here because I assume that like Sora goes missing somewhere in this volume and they also battle the cat people. So yeah, No Game, No Life. And the last volume of manga that I picked up this month is boom the signature edition of Tokyo Ghoul well, they're all signature editions but yeah like I say Viz Media they do an absolutely amazing amazing job with the signature editions like the inking in this is some of the best inking that I've ever seen in a manga like all of the characters are so bold there's no fading whatsoever it's just ugh, so beautiful it's like it's like vertical what they did with the flowers of evil Looks just looks absolutely stunning, but yeah, we have Hinami on the front. Tokyo Ghoul stays awesome, amazing volume, way more detailed than the anime. I'm telling you this now that if you watch the Tokyo Ghoul anime, read the manga, so much stuff is left out, so much character development, so very good. But yeah, guys, that is it for the video. Thank you for watching, thank you for supporting my channel. More great stuff to come. Hopefully I'll be doing a huge right stuff haul for Black Friday. I've been trying to abstain from buying anime so I could save up for this Black Friday sale and holiday sale that we all know is coming. But yeah, like I said, thanks for supporting my channel, guys. Peace, peace. Later. Deuces.